Hello. In this episode, I'd like to ponder two questions. Was ancient Egypt influenced by other parts of Africa? Two, what did ancient Egypt look like? And I'd like us to start by taking a closer look at the origin of ancient Egypt. The ancient Egyptian civilization has been said by various historians to have started about 10, 8, or 5,000 years ago. The jury is still out on trying to figure out precisely when it started. What is important to note here is that it is the earliest recorded civilization. It is said to have lasted more than 3,000 years and was divided into two kingdoms spanning 30 dynasties. It is believed to be the oldest of all civilizations. Now, from the earliest and most reliable records found in the Edfu text, which I mentioned in an earlier episode, the area was conquered by Horus, who came there from somewhere south of Egypt. As I stressed in that episode, the Edfu text was carved in stone. It was found in the temple of Horus, the oldest recorded ruler of Egypt in the area that we now know as ancient Egypt. Horus conquered the people he met in the area just as he had vanquished the people he met on his way from, from the south. This king Horus became deified after he died. The place that Horus came from was has originally the place that Horus came from originally has been identified as somewhere around Uganda and Somaliland. I won't dwell on the question of whether or not Horus and his followers were black Africans since I've elaborated enough on the genesis of that debate in the last episode. Please take time to watch that episode if you have not already done so. I just want to add here that apart from the incontrovertible evidence found in the Edfu texts, other archaeological findings and accounts of early historians like Herodotus, a Greek who wrote about the identity of the ancient Egyptians around 450 BC, and other Greeks who were uh, contemporaries, all support the idea that the ancient Egyptians were dark-skinned with woolly hair like you and I. So they had to have been of African descent. Reasonable academics agree that over generations, the population of, e of Egypt has continued to change due to waves of migration over several centuries. Even if we were to go by the way the Egyptians identified themselves, they called their country Kemet, which means black land. It was a nation which was culturally advanced in many aspects, such as mathematics, writing in the form of hieroglyphics, astronomy, architecture, the arts, science, technology, and religion. Now, in this, describing the pyramids as he saw them, Herodotus writes that they were built out of polished stones, and he believed that the stones were raised by machines made out of wooden planks. The level of sophisticated calculations that must have gone into the construction of the Sphinx as well as the Great Pyramids, continues to astound modern mathematicians, scientists, and astronomers. It is believed that the pyramids were positioned to reflect the rays of the sun in exact proportions to the equinoxes and the solstices, and that these were tied to agricultural events, such as the time, the time to plant or, or harvest. In the area of writing, the ancient Egyptians developed hieroglyphics, which were a combination of images, syllables, and alphabets, comprising of about 1,000 characters. The cursive version 
of the hieroglyphics was used to write religious inscriptions by priests. They, they, they used it to write on, on, on papyrus, um, the very first kind of paper that, um, uh, that we used to write. Uh, a papyrus was made from uh, a plant which grew only around Egypt. So the priests used hieroglyphics to write on papyrus and wood. These priests were also the chroniclers and keepers of records. They were also healers of the sick, embalmers when people died. And they were sculptors, musicians, lawyers, lawmakers, and teachers. As such, they controlled not only the religious, but also the intellectual life of ancient Egypt. Now, at the height of ancient Egypt's glory, in cities like Thebes, there were magnificent mansions built by the wealthy, some of which had as many as 50 rooms. Their mansions were decorated with elaborate paintings, expensive furniture, and sculptures made from bronze, ebony, and ivory, which must have come from um, the African uh, continent. This is also another proof of the interconnectivity between Egypt and um, the African uh, interior. Cities in ancient Egypt had well laid out avenues lined with trees. The magnitude of the pyramids has led some historians to suggest that the only way um, that they could have been built was through slave labor. Um, as such, they concluded that slavery must have been widespread in Egypt.